Today I kind of wanted to talk about like how you would handle a phone call and or a quote. I understand that a lot of us, we use the old school pen and paper. And I always keep one right here on my counter, on my kitchen counter. So when people call me, I just start writing your information down. From there, after I write this information down, let's say John calls me and John wants me to do like a weekly mowing service. What I'll write down is I'll write down his first and last name, good contact uh, number for him to get a hold of him, and then I'll let him know, and then an address for where he wants me to go, and then some key features on the address, like the color of the house, if there's a pole barn, if there's a flag hanging off the deck, um, if there's a car in the driveway, stuff like that. And then I will also let them know, like, you do not have to be on the property while I'm getting, giving the car going over the yard but I'd like to let them know like when I'm going to be there and when I am there just so that they don't think somebody's just walking through their yard um, so I, I like to give them a good 15 minutes heads up um, I try to text as much as I can because we just live in a world nowadays where everybody wants to text but if it's an elderly couple I it doesn't matter if they're elderly or not I always give them the option would you rather me call you or text you if, you know and then we'll just go from there um, some people prefer email. In fact, almost all my commercial properties are email, which is kind of nice as well. It's just like texting these days. But I get key features on their property because there's <laughs> there's nothing worse than going to a property and it's the wrong house. You're supposed to be doing the neighbor across the street or you wrote the number down wrong and instead of it being like 730 North Street, it's 731. And like I said, you went to the wrong side of the street. So I like to get a little bit of, you know, detail of what I'm, I'm walking into. And then after that, I try to figure out how can I get this quote in as quick as possible? So I know a lot of you will have like dedicated days to where you give quotes and like you'll do certain times and stuff like that. But the way I look at it is like, I wanna get this quote to this person as soon as possible. And I can't tell you how many Google reviews I actually have on my page that are five stars and somewhere in that review it says something about he was so quick to respond. He was so quick to get us a quote. He was so quick to service our property. Um, I've done multiple, 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 multiple cleanups that I'll get the call like on a Friday afternoon and then like Saturday morning I'm already there, I'm working, it's done. Stuff like that. I understand everybody's schedule is different. Some of you are only part time when you do this. But for me, it's about getting there quick because I try to put myself in their shoes. If I was to call for a service, I'm probably not going to just call one person and then just wait it out and leave it there. I'm probably going to call multiple people. And most of the time, people want their stuff done pretty quick. That's just the world we live in these days. So I try to be as responsive and as quick as possible. And... I love when I get that response because I'll tell them like, hey, I'll be out there in about an hour, hour and a half, two hours, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, whoa, really? Okay, that's fantastic. Like they say that a lot. I get that a lot. Um, they love the quick response time. I actually, um, I'll show you guys here just one of my emails that I got from a commercial property. Um, he literally said, okay, thanks, Brian. I appreciate the quote and quick response. So he said, I'm gathering all the quotes together and we'll be presenting these to the owner of the companies. That's just a commercial property that I, um, the guy literally called me Wednesday. At, it was four, it was like 4.50 when he called me. So he was probably getting ready to leave. And then um, I had the quote put together and given to him like Friday morning. So it was really fast. It was really quick, but it was a big property and there was a lot that went into it and it wasn't just me walking over there and looking at it and saying okay this is going to take me an hour and a half here's my numbers no he wanted numbers for everything and there's a chunk of property that they have where it only gets done once a month so I had to factor in that also and on that chunk of property there's like 80 oak trees and I'm not kidding I'm not exaggerating that like there's so many trees so the leaf cleanup had to be really thought out I had to figure out which way the wind was coming. I had to figure out where the leaves were gonna fall once they did fall and then like where they were gonna stay. I had to figure out if I could dump on the property, if I had to take away. And then we kind of had to go over a time frame of when this was gonna get done. So there was a lot that went into it, but I got it done in a day and a half. So um, the quick response, as you can tell, I, that, I get that a lot. So um, 
Try to be as fast as you can with your quotes when you're picking up the phone. And also another huge thing, and I know some of you probably don't think it's that big of a deal, but when you're answering your phone, answer it like you run a business that you're proud of. There's a guy that is on Google in my area that when you call him, he just says, hi. He's, hello? I'm like, seriously? I'm like, is this such and such? And he's like, yup. And I'm like, dude, I wanted to hang up so bad. <laughs> But like, just put a little oomph in it. You ain't gotta sell it. You're not trying to sell courses to people, but you should definitely be uh, somewhat excited when you're answering the phone, my goodness. Um, so yeah, that's how I do it. And I go there, I walk the property, and while I'm there, I'm literally doing the job in my head. There's a lot of people on here that will tell you, oh, you measure out the square footage. You don't even have to go to the property. You should always go to the property, I swear. like you really should always go to the property because you don't want to get there and be like, wow, there's just hills, there's bushes, there's just, it's a hot mess. You don't want to, you don't want to end up like that. Um, Google Earth is not always the most accurate. And then the street views from Google and all that stuff like that, the, the GPS, that's not always, like if you have a giant maple tree in the front yard, like what's underneath that you can't see that. So you have to, I mean, you should be walking all your properties because I mean, it's, it's going to take, you know, half hour, 45 minutes out of your day, but it might save you in the long run. Um, and it gives you a chance to talk to the owner as well, too, if they're there, if they want to talk to you. Maybe sell some more things while you're there as far as, like, pruning bushes, maybe blowing up gutters, stuff like that. Just keep that in mind. Um, always walk your properties. Now, this is how I do my quotes, and it has worked fantastic for me for a while. You need to find a rate per hour that you need to make. So for my uncle, it's 55 to $60 an hour, but that was back in 2018. He said it's probably right around 70 now, 75. I like to stick in the $80 an hour range. Now, are there certain clients that are different? Yes. Are there certain lawns that just help me so much? Yes. Like. If there's a beautiful lawn in a subdivision that I really want to get into, I'm going to give them a good deal, you know, um, because I look at it as like advertisement. Instead of maybe charging them 50 bucks a week, I'm only charging them 45 because I really want to land this client. So maybe I'll bump it down from $80 an hour to like $60 an hour. But it's because I'm going in that subdivision every single week, just my big old truck and my big old trailer making all kinds of noise. I got my t-shirts on. Everybody can see me like, and then they're going to see the, the work that I've done and they're going to be like, wow. And then, you know, you can just talk to your neighbors, talk to the people that are around you and hopefully you can land three or four or five more of those. I honestly have three homes in subdivisions and they're all by themselves. Every single home that I have, it's that one that stands alone in that subdivision. And I picked them up uh, last year and I haven't had anybody um, call me back that lives in that subdivision or give me a call or reach out to me so far. But I'm crossing my fingers that this year I do get a couple of them. And then stay on top of your stuff, you guys, especially when the springtime is coming, April and May are coming, we're about to start cutting. You're going to start getting phone calls. You're going to start getting text messages. Um, you need to put yourself out there. Just blast your name everywhere. Get some yard signs. Put the signs out in front of the road. Like put yourself all over Facebook. Have your friends and your family share everything you possibly can. Like you just want to be noticed. If you got a couple of grand laying around, you want to do some advertising, buy some billboards. Do the billboards for the whole month of April and uh, let everybody give you the phone calls, but you want to stay on top of them. I'm telling you, the moment you're like, I'll do that tomorrow, or I'll do that Thursday, or I'll, I'll do that this coming set, like you're gonna get buried. Or someone's gonna call you and you're gonna be like, yes, Sally, this is such and such from such and such. And then you write down all of our information and you're like, I have a couple of things going on today and tomorrow, but I'll definitely be able to get to it on, you know, three days down the road or four days down the road. And then all of a sudden you write it down and you have it there. And in those four days, you've already gotten five, six, seven, eight, nine more phone calls. So she's already, buried in the notebook like three pages back and then you finally go up to it on thursday and you find her and then you call her and she's like oh i already found somebody thank you so you just wasted all that time of answering the phone call writing down that information and then you know like that's when you do that 15 to 20 times in a season like it starts to hurt you 
Um, that could have been a gold mine there. She could have wanted her deck painted, her all her bushes trimmed. She could have wanted new mulch put down in her beds. You don't want to miss out on those opportunities. So if you are busy, make some time, you know, like get out there and get it going. Like as soon as you can, I do, I'll drop anything that I'm doing and I'll, I'll head right out to a client's house and I'll get that bid put together. I understand a lot of people start getting really busy. And then when you start cutting, you get into the cutting season, you're like, I can't really just drop everything I'm doing. I understand that, but try to get it done within a, a couple of hours of that same day they called. Also, another thing, when Sally calls you and you're like, I'm heading right out, I'll be there, you know, at such and such time, don't give them a such and such time. Please, don't do that. Literally, there, that's the reason why electricians and plumbers and anybody that services your property always tells you they'll be there between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., you know what I mean? Because things happen, you get a flat tire, you're running late, you forgot to do something, you ran out of gas, something like that. And then, you know, it's just, you have that problem, plus now you gotta deal with Sally because you told her you'd be there at noon and now it's one o'clock because you know, traffic or something. like. So just give yourself a nice, good two, three hour cushion window. Just say, Sally, I got some time. Um, I will be there between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. or something like that. And she'll be like, okay, great. And then just let her know, like, I will give you a call when I'm on my way, when I'm 15 minutes out. Something like that, 10 minutes out, or you could even wait until you get there and you could call or text and say, hey, it's such and such from here. And I'm, I'm here, this is what I'm wearing. Um, I just want to let you know that I'm gonna take a quick peek around your yard and then I'm gonna be gone and I'm gonna call you back with a quote, something like that. And they tend to love that. Um, or they might come out and talk to you and then you can give them a business card and you can write down what the number is on your business card if you already have it in your mind. I tend to have a number in my mind within like five minutes of being there. Um, once you've done a thousand of them, it, it, it just comes second nature. So try to stay consistent. Try to stay, try to stay on top of things. You know, you're trying to beat the other 400 people that are, are trying to do the same thing. And everybody's getting phone calls right now. Everybody's getting the same phone calls from the same people. Everybody is. Another big, huge tip. Do not bad mouth anybody to any client ever. Don't at, don't ever, if, if, if Tom calls you and Tom says, um, well, I worked with such and such last year, do not, even if you know who this person is and you absolutely hate them, do not bad mouth another company or any other, don't ever do it. Just say, just say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, that sucks. This is what I'm gonna offer you. Because, listen, that could be a, somebody's, you know, they might know who that person is personally. That might be their husband, that might be their cousin, that might be one of their best friends they went to school with. You do not know. You do not wanna bad mouth anybody ever, okay? That you don't wanna do it. It does nothing for you. It, there's no positive in it. If Sally calls you up and says, I had, somebody blah 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 from last year and they did awful and blah 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 just say sally i'm sorry to hear that but here at such and such we're going to make sure that we take really good care of you and then just start getting her information do not get caught up in bad mouthing somebody else that's in your area i promise you it'll come back and bite you in the, in the butt it, it has, i did not do that i'm just saying like it i i know that could happen when it comes to getting back to them and giving them the quote and then they say yes and put you on the schedule that's when you put them on the schedule immediately. You find out where does Sally fit in your daily route? Um, is she a Monday? Is she a Tuesday? Is she a Wednesday? Depending on how you cut. I have no idea how you do your lawns. But where does she fit? Get her in there. Put her in there. Kind of let her know, hey Sally, you as of right now are looking like Monday afternoons or Monday evenings between the hours of like 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. That's where you're at right now. Um, if anything changes, I'll let you know. And then always let them know depending on weather, because you know, if you're not working and the weather's really bad, keep that in mind also. So I use an app called Lawn Buddy, and it's an app on my phone. I get to put in all my customers, uh, I get to put in their first name, their last name, their email, their you know phone number, address, all that stuff, what they want on their properties. You can add individual jobs, you can add weekly jobs, you can add bi-weekly jobs that just pop up automatically when you go to your job list, you're like, Oh, we're gonna go see Sally, John, Terry, and Kevin this Monday. And then you can even click on their name and then there's an address you can pop it up to. 
you can have all those for like a weekly mowing or a bi-weekly mowing, or you could have, let's say you have Terry on a weekly mowing, you're cutting them on Monday, but then Terry calls you up and says, hey, is there any way you can get some mulch put in for me? You don't have to mess up the whole weekly job schedule he has. You can literally just create another job under his name and then put in what it is, what you guys are doing, what day you plan on doing it. It's fantastic. And then you can send invoices every single time the job's done. You can send them never. You can send them on the first of the month, the 15th, the end of the month. You can send them um, when you want to. You can create them. There's so many different ways to send the invoices. And they look so professional. And I'll tell you why. Let's say you cut Terry four times in the month. Every single time you go to his property, you click job complete. It saves it, boom, saves it, boom. And then at the end of the, the month, you go up to Terry, you, put, you hit create invoice and you add those four cuts. Boom, put those four cuts in the invoice. And then it sends over to Terry the invoice of the total amount due. Um, and then it tells you exactly what day and time you were there and it was completed. It's beautiful. Also, you can add pictures and notes to the invoice. So. If you haven't used Lawn Buddy, I would highly recommend you look into it. It's fantastic. This is all free, by the way. This app is 100% free. There is a, um, a pro that you can use, but I've been using it for three years and I've never needed the pro. The pro is literally to track your crews, um, to put GPSs on their phones. Uh, uh, there, it, it'll create a, like the best route for you, stuff like that. Um, if you want to create the best route, like the most efficient, so you're going to the right spot at the right time, I would highly recommend you go into MapQuest. That's right, MapQuest. It's totally free. You can pull it up on your phone. You can pull it up on your computer. It gives you 26 slots, okay? So what you want to do is you want to take the customers that you have, put in their, their address, and just keep going, 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 going. And for instance, let's say you've got five people up north, you've got five people on the east side, you got five people south, blah, blah, blah. Like you can you can individually put those five here and then you can calculate the route you wanna do or you can put them all in together and it'll show you the map. And then while you're looking at the map, it'll, it'll have letters too. It'll say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You can literally look at them and say, okay, there's these ones. I wanna go from F to E to C to B on Mondays and then you write that down or you type it in your computer on your mowing list and that's how you stay organized and that's how you get the best efficient route because the worst thing you want to do is let's say Monday morning you head up to here but then all of a sudden you go back here but then you head back over that one and then you go over again then you go over here and then back down like you don't you want to hit every single one of those and then go back home if you put these things in the map, MapQuest will show you, you want to start here, 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 okay? And then you can also put in gas stations if you really wanted to. Like, it's, it's phenomenal. So then after you use MapQuest and it gives you the best route and then you put it on your Microsoft Word or, or you just write it on a piece of paper. You literally go into your notepad and you just write down their name, their address, their phone number, maybe what day you want to put them, like have a Monday sheet, a Tuesday sheet, Wednesday sheet, whatever you want to do. Uh, my first year, I was all pen and paper and it worked just fine. And I loved it. I really did. I, like I have a dedicated folder to, and then, but this year, <laughs> I already have, I already have 30 clients. That is huge compared to what I had last year. Last year, I think at the peak, I had eight, maybe nine, but I did have a lot of other jobs. I painted decks and all that stuff too. But right now I already have 30 clients and I'm still getting phone calls and I still have to put in two more bids today. And then I have to go look at two other properties um, today as well. And I already went to one of my clients today. She's getting a whole brand new uh, mulch bed put in on, on two spots in her front yard. She already paid me for all the labor today and then I'm gonna be going out and getting all the materials and get that started this week for her. That's a huge landscape project, um, money in the bank. Fantastic, because it's only March 11th and we're already doing huge jobs. I have two cleanups that need to get done this week. Um, I think one of them's gonna have to get pushed because I do believe he's gonna want the leaves taking off his property. And as of right now, I have nowhere to put anything. I don't have an empty trailer. I don't have a leaf dump I could go to. I got nothing, so I gotta figure that out too. So, 
when people are calling you, remember, be professional, be polite, and do not badmouth anybody no matter what over the phone. I don't care if they spend the whole five minutes talking to you, bashing the other people that what they were doing or their price or anything like that. Do not do it. Don't, don't fall for it, okay? You don't want to get in the habit of badmouthing other people that are working next to you. You don't want enemies. If anything, help other people out. Um, that's how you make money. <laughs> Get their name, their information, write them down, go out, do a quote. Um, do not be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to say no. If you get on that property and you're like, eh, but I really want the money. I understand all of us started that way. All of us were hungry. We wanted every single property. But I promise you, if you're, if you're doing crap work that you don't want to do or it's making your company look bad, it's going to end up biting you in the butt more than that $40 or $50 a week. Um, do not negotiate your price ever with anybody. You set your price at whatever your hourly rate is or whatever it is, um, however you do your payments to yourself. I don't know if you do like a dollar a minute or $100 an acre, however you do it, but do not deviate from that. Also highly consider, um, is this lawn gonna make me, is it gonna make me angry every time I show up to it? Is it gonna make me happy? Is it gonna make me some money? So keep that in mind as well. Also, when it comes to weekly and bi-weekly, bi-weekly is a, is a absolute no when you have a bunch of clients. But when you have five, 10, 15 clients, bi-weekly is totally fine, okay? To an extent. You need to let people know what a bi-weekly entails. Why is it more expensive than a weekly? Well, because there's more grass. Um, and then they're also taking up a weekly uh, spot from you. So you can only mow so many yards in a week. Um, and if, a, if you have a bi-weekly, that bi-weekly is taking up their spot and the week before that too. So you need to let them know that like, okay, for instance, to give you an example, if I was to sell somebody $50 weekly or it's gonna be $75 um, bi-weekly, you always wanna add that 25% on the bi-weekly because of what I just explained to you. The grass is going to be taller, there's going to be more work, but you also need to let them know that. Like, even if they don't ask, just tell them like, hey, it's, it's more expensive because there's more grass, um, it's more work, and then also it's bad for your grass to cut it every two weeks. Your grass doesn't wanna go from this to this, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna make it work so hard to grow back. So keep that in mind also when you're when your clients are asking for bi-weekly. So many times people are gonna say, "Well, my grass doesn't grow in the summertime." Blah blah blah. You just let them know if you skip, which I would not ever let anybody skip a yard. Never skip a cut because that just throws a wrench in everything. If you absolutely have to let somebody skip, you need to let them know they cannot just go to the next week because it's just gonna start throwing your whole schedule off, okay? You need consistency when it comes to this. You need to be consistent. So you need to let people know, listen, if I'm cutting your stuff this week and next week it's pouring down rain or you go on vacation or something happens and you can't get a cut, I am not gonna just put you on the next following week you need to wait another full term to get your two week to get them on the two week schedule so keep that in mind if you guys are liking this video so far please leave me a thumbs up and then consider subscribing to the channel i'm working my butt off here and i almost have 500 some i almost have 500 subscribers and i'm having a really bad hair day but i'm trying to get this information in. i've been super busy which i absolutely love it it's keeping me on my toes um but yeah, if you're liking the video and loving the content, just hit that like button for me, guys. It helps out so much. And then consider subscribing to the channel. I'm putting out videos very consistently with a lot of information that's going to help you guys grow in this business, in this lawn care industry. Um, when you're first starting out also, consider not doing everything. You don't have to prune everybody's trees. You don't have to do all the mulch. You don't have to aerate and seed and weed and feed. Like, just cut some grass. Like... Get your toes wet, get comfortable, get, start getting like the, the scheduling and writing things down and getting ads put out on yourself and business cards made and t-shirts and all that. That's just as important as, you know, pruning somebody's trees or, or, or trimming their bushes up or, or fixing something in their lawn. Like that's just as important. 
People are gonna ask you all the time for stuff. You don't have to tell them yes, okay? You don't have to tell them yes. You do not have to go out to Lowell's and buy a $300 machine so that now you offer this service. Like, you don't have to do that. Just think about what's gonna make you build a better business. I offer very little services. I cut grass, I do cleanups, I'll mulch once in a while. If, if these things fit into my schedule, I'll do these things, but I just wanna cut grass. And Dirt Monkey on YouTube will tell you any day of the week you will never make money cutting grass because you have to compete with some 15 year old or you have to compete with somebody who can do it cheaper and so on and so forth. And to an extent, he's right. I mean, I'm doing just fine, like literally just fine. And I like cutting grass and it just makes my life so much easier. Um, it's a good way to grow a good business. So. Keep that in mind when people are calling you and giving you quotes, stay on top of it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm definitely gonna do my best to stay on top of these things and kind of show you guys what I'm doing. I did wanna get a little bit of footage in today because I don't wanna leave you guys three, four, five days without videos. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching this far into it. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't seen my newest video, um, I just put up a, a review on my Milwaukee versus steel, the battery versus the gas. You can check that video out right here and then subscribe to the channel. Just press this button right here. Thank you guys so much. Peace.